thank you for having us. Uh, we are here. I'm leading a delegation from the WTO in Geneva that has just been introduced. Um, and the mission, we've come to Nigeria. This is my first official mission. And as I said, if you do something, charity begins at home. So I wanted to come here to express my thanks to His Excellency, Mr. President, to the ministers and the teams that supported uh, the, my election, and also to ECOWAS, uh, the regional body. I know that uh, President Isufu of Niger is visiting His Excellency today, and he was very instrumental in terms of uh, supporting, bringing ECOWAS along. So I'd like to express my thanks. So that's one objective of the mission. But the main reason we're here is really to see how the WTO can support Nigeria in um, improving its economy. And part of doing that is the health. We are in a pandemic, and of course you cannot advance the economy on, until you take care of the health aspects. And uh, so what is the, the, what the secretary to the government and the office is doing, along with the presidential task force, is uh, very, it's laudable, and we wanted to just discuss with them, one, what is happening, the arrival of the COVID vaccines, um, how that is being distributed, the challenges, opportunities on, on, on the way of that, what the WTO can do. Interestingly, trade is very instrumental in access to medical supplies and equipment, because how do they get from one place to the other? It is through trade. And part of the challenges we've had in this pandemic is the fact that some of our member countries have put export restrictions on the movement of medical supplies, equipment, and even uh, uh, supplies to make vaccines. So one of the things the WTO can do is to work with members to reduce these export restrictions. If you take vaccines, for instance, I'll just give you one number from the manufacturer of Pfizer, the pfizer Biontech vaccine. We had a meeting with manufacturers a couple of days ago in Geneva, and their representative said that it takes 280 components to manufacture their vaccine. And it's in a supply chain that involves 19 countries. So the supply chains for many of our products, medical products, uh, are global. And so when a country puts export restrictions on one, it means that you slow the production everywhere. That's where the WTO comes in, because we have certain rules that members should abide by with respect to these restrictions. And we play a fundamental role in making sure uh, that medical supplies and uh, equipment and vaccines circulate. And you remember at the beginning of the pandemic, there are many countries, you know, blocked uh, exports. So we've managed to get, uh, reduce this. There were 91 countries at the beginning who were, uh, who had restrictions and prohibitions on, on export of uh, medical supplies and equipment. We are now down to 59. So we've reduced considerably, but it's still too many in my view. And uh, so that's one of the things we are trying to get right. So we are here to see what we can do to support Nigeria. I have to personally say that um, I'm also, I was chair of Gavi, the Vaccine Alliance for five years, one of those who designed the COVAX facility and have been very proud of the ability to make available uh, to poorer countries and to emerging markets like Nigeria access to vaccines at affordable prices. So we will continue to push that and uh, we want to see what the challenges and opportunities are and how it's going. Let me say I'm proud till now of what the progress that is being made. It, it sounds good and I hope we can continue in that way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Gigi. We we'll listen to you. The World Trade Organization Honorable Ministers here present, permanent secretaries, members of the Presidential Task Force, our good friend Ambassador Chad of Barbados, along with uh, members of the delegation. Uh, let me start, uh, Your Excellency, uh, Ma, to truly express our deepest 
a profound congratulations to you uh, on your election as the first woman and the first African to ascend to the office of the DG of the WTO at a time when Nigeria is conflicted somehow but it's, it, it is at its base on the international uh, arena. Your elec election is the, is the testimony to your proven track record. You are not new uh, to the uh, political landscape in this country, at least in the last 20 years, you've been very constant in promoting the cause of Nigeria's economic sustainable development and you have continued in that stride even at the international level in your other engagements at the World Bank and uh, uh, other uh, multilateral or bilateral uh, platforms in which you have exercised. So we are very, very confident that your election into this office will bring a lot of uh, goodwill to Nigeria and it would help us advance the course of development in this country. I'm quick to say that uh, this is one of our finest moments internationally because of the positions that Nigerians hold at the international level. At the global level we have you we have Hajia Amina Mohammed, who is the Deputy Secretary General of the United Nations. At the continental level, particularly in the areas of finance and economy, we have the President of the African Development Bank, we have the President of the Afri Exim Bank. So Nigeria, as a matter of fact, controls how money is spent <laughs> and raised on the continent of Africa. And we also have at uh, the AU, for the first time, the commissioner uh, who was elected of recent. And I believe with all these resourceful persons holding these very, very strategic offices, you bring your wealth of uh, experiences to bear in helping us back at home recalibrate our entire developmental efforts. COVID-19 has come out with a lot of, uh, I always say that it came with a lot of adverse effects and impacts, but it's also provided an opportunity for us to really go back and look at our system. The good thing about COVID-19 is that it has exposed the weaknesses of all systems. Even the most established democracies and economies have been brought to their knees by the adverse effects of COVID-19. But I think the developing economies stand to benefit if they learn from the lessons of these adverse impacts and look at their systems, their governance system, their, uh, their economic uh, uh, foundations, and uh, uh, the need to heighten uh, uh, inclusion in the way we develop our agendas and our programs. Because it has totally exposed the weaknesses of how inclusive our societies are. And that informs part of the challenges we are having in our country, especially in the areas of uh, 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 security. And I believe that uh, you would be of tremendous help to us in making sure that Nigeria uh, is, uh, uh, has an equitable uh, share in trade negotiations 
uh, and also uh, help coordinate to ensure, like you rightly say, that the streams of medical supplies are not in any way hindered. Uh, because we are, we, we are not out of the woods yet when it comes to issues of uh, uh, the, the, the pandemic. We, we just midstream. Uh, vaccines have arrived. And I want to take this opportunity to truly thank you for your efforts uh, as chair of Gavi in ensuring, because I kept getting reports that you are on everybody's neck to ensure that Nigeria got its supplies. And, uh, 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 you see, that's the benefit that we start to drive as a country when you have your own in a particular position. And I want to thank you for that. Uh, when Ghana got there, as, uh, we didn't get uh, as uh, a task force, we came under intense pressure and we were having sleepless night. <laughs> and I told them that it's not a matter of competition. Uh, these things are being scheduled, but I was confident that you, you, you would help us get through. Uh, so I want to take this opportunity to truly welcome you home, Ma, and to honestly express uh, our deepest uh, the, um, profound congratulations to you and also our expectations of you. You have never failed in any assignment. I believe that this one has just uh, brought you uh, to, the, to, to, to the focus when the world uh, is deserving of equitable trade policies and uh, uh, policies that would help uh, developing economies be able to favorably uh, compete in the world market. So I thank you and I welcome you with your delegation uh, on this Qatar's visit as you spend some more time at home before you return to your base. We'll continue to uphold you in prayers uh, because Nigeria is a praying country. Uh, we, 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 so that uh, your tenure will bring uh, soko and relief to countries that are under intense economic pressure uh, with the budget deficits left, right, and center, with the deficits in infrastructure, housing deficit, uh, we, we definitely believe that uh, your tenure will bring succor to each and every one of us. On behalf of the Presidential Tax Force, we want to thank you for acknowledging the modest efforts that we have put in place in the course of the one year. Uh, it was quite tricky. We didn't know what to do at the beginning. Uh, same with every part of the world. They didn't know what to do because uh, COVID-19 took the world with a storm. It took the world with a storm. But however, uh, our modest efforts have uh, kind of helped us in, uh, uh, in interrupting the spread of COVID-19. And uh, now that vaccines have come on board, a combination of vaccines and the non-pharmaceutical interventions will help us uh, turn the tide and uh, dampen the spread and eventually we'll begin to return to something that looks like normal. Thank you, Madam, for coming and we wish you well. Become my new briefcase. briefcase. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Excellency. It, it does. <laughs> Very nice. Ambassador Chad, for being a very strong pillar, uh, for being a very strong pillar uh, to Dr. Ngozi uh, during the processes of uh, the selection and the election processes, uh, and for being a friend of Nigeria. Uh, we've had a very long standing relationship with Barbados. And I believe that uh, uh, this is our token of appreciation to you. Thank you very much. For all the good work that you've done. And we urge you to continue to support. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let, let me also say very quickly that yeah. Barbados will continue to always support this lovely country. Okay. Thank, thank you, you so much. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The UN representative, too. So, one of the representatives will collect on behalf of all. Thank you.